So what I noticed here was that at Google, people were empowered, not just because we had the freedom to decide what to do and, and the support to do it, but because we knew what was important for the business and how what we were doing contributed to that. And so we had enough context to make good decisions about what to do. It's easy to empower people when you give them enough context. And over time, I discovered that a lot of this was because of OKRs, or rather because of the way good management was structured around OKRs. And I say this because both are important. OKRs on their own won't give you much. You need good management as well. You said this again. And I say this because both are important. OKRs on their own won't give you much. You need good management as well. And we'll talk about that shortly. Like in Doug's story about the ad toolbar, we were informed by our company level OKRs, the direction the company had set for the whole organization, and by our group or product team's OKRs. And this helped us understand how we were to create value gave us a direction. But the value of OKRs was more than just having those OKRs as input. It was being involved in the process. So in setting our team OKRs, we'd spend time together each quarter, figuring out what was important for the business within our domain. We'd draft some OKRs and review them with our managers and align with our stakeholders. And we changed them based on their input. This process meant that each quarter, we understood more and more about how to create value and how our business worked. So once we agreed with our management and stakeholders on what we were trying to achieve, our OKRs, our objectives and key results, then we were then relatively free to find solutions that met these objectives and delivered the key results. And as we did so, we'd talk to our management and stakeholders about what we were doing and how it was creating value. It's not just collecting underpants. We weren't focused on the tasks. We really connected our tasks to the value that was necessary for the company and hence to the strategy for, of the company. OKRs became a part of how we worked. When we all got stuck in debate about the right solution for a particular problem, someone would ask, as they often do in most organizations, what are we really trying to achieve here? And at you know, Google, more often than not, the answer would already be written down in the OKRs we were working towards, so we could use that to help align. And when we started working with a new team, we'd review each other's OKRs, because that would help us understand how best to collaborate. If you've got an, an objective you're trying to achieve and some key results you're trying to produce, if I understand what they are, you and I will be able to contribute, co collaborate a lot better than if I don't understand what you're trying to achieve. When we kick off a new project, we'd first figure out what we were trying to achieve, what's in what success looked like, the OKRs for that project, and that would become the North Star for that project. But I mentioned at the start that it's more than just OKRs. It's also good management. Now, Google's management culture is pretty good. They ran something called Project Oxygen to define what good management is. And I want to go through it and show how almost all of these attributes are built on the framework of OKRs. Now, I'll share the link in the description below so you can find it. And this is the page on a site called Rework, and it goes through this. So Google Manager Behaviors. And as I say, almost all of these attributes are built on the framework of OKRs. So let's go through them. Number one is a good coach. OKRs are a great tool for coaching teams to deliver what matters and for guiding the coaching. Number two, empowers the team and does not micromanage. OKRs help find the balance of context and direction that allows teams to be empowered. Remember the story about Doug. Number three, creates an inclusive team environment showing concern for success and well-being. This is really important, but it's not so related to OKRs. Number four, is productive and results oriented. OKRs are all about results. It's key results. You know, This is about setting what, it, what are the results we're trying to achieve and keeping people focused on them. Number five, is a good communicator, listens and shares information. Using OKRs prompts information sharing because you're always talking about the phase two, the why behind the tasks, what's the value we're creating. Number six, score, supports career development and discusses performance. While OKRs are not a performance management tool, and we'll talk about that later in the, in the program, they're really useful in a performance discussion. Finding that balance can be tricky, but OKRs really do help your performance discussions. Number seven, has a clear vision or strategy for the team. OKRs are a part or a method to, to, to communicate strategy clearly. Number eight, has key technical skills to help advise the team. Now, it's hard to write good OKRs without these skills. So any manager who's able to, to engage in that process of figuring out what the OKRs are usually, can, usually should have at least some of those technical skills. You do need more than just the ability to write good OKRs though. Number nine, collaborate across Google, across your organization. Obviously, this is applicable to other companies as well. I, but I already mentioned how OKRs help collaboration. So 
if you're using OKRs, it helps you to collaborate, which is actually one of the things that really helps you be a great manager and hence have a great team. Number 10 is a strong decision maker. Now, having clear OKRs helps to define the right decisions to be making. You know what you're trying to achieve, you can make the right decisions. So you can see from this that while OKRs don't create culture, in fact, I'd argue that OKRs don't do it much on their own at all. But when you combine OKRs with good management, they're really helpful in creating the sort of high-performing, engaging, empowered culture we all want to work in. Further than that, when you're using OKRs, it becomes easier to structure your management around OKRs so that you can build good management practices. In the next video, we're going to write down what we want to achieve in this course. Then following that, we'll go over a high-level summary of what OKRs are.